Well hello and today I'm cutting out the wooden soles for my clogs. So they have obviously wooden soles, leather uppers and I'll be cutting out the soles. I've made up a template so I have a guide here and to do that I've basically taken my last and made sure I've got the sole bed matching the last. Got the outline of the last where your foot treads and I've added five millimeters all around for my leather overlap. So that's where I'll put the channel in all the way around the edge for the leather. Jolly cold out there today, uh, freezing. So I'll probably wear a hat or something, try and keep warm. But um, good tools in this one. Got some lovely bit of order. A friend very kindly. Um, there's a tree which had fallen down across a stream, and it's order. So order often grows along rivers and streams. How it sort of disperses itself. And um, very kindly, he's got me a couple of log sections. So got some good wood, and of course got my clock knives. So let's get going. <laughs> no, I'll keep here in the warm. So I'm going to start off by splitting the log and I've got my wedges for that so I'm going to there's some already some sort of natural crack lines in the surface so I thought if I follow those ideally I want to get one flat area to actually work from if I can get one flat reference point then that's good stuff So I'm just going to use my pro to open up this gap. I certainly don't want to put my fingers in there in case it closes. So I need a nice bit of order. So I think I've probably just about got enough depth on this piece. I've got a nice surface there I can flatten off and then I can start to make the heel and the sole unit etc from there. That's probably not a bad bit. I do have the option of trimming at each side and keeping the grain more consistent which would be quite nice in some ways. So I will study what I have got. I'm quite, quite happy with that split. It's not too bad. I'll obviously try and avoid the knotty center. Again, it's quite nice and flat here. So I may do another split. In fact, I think I will. I'm going to do, there's a very faint crack there. I'm going to do another split. I'll show you on the end. So there is another faint crack just there. I'm going to see if I can split it down there and open that bit. So again, I will try and open that one about there. It's just a little crack starting to come. Once again, I'll pop my throw in. And there we have it. Now, I've just gone down the sides with this bit, so it's getting more of a sort of shape I want it to be. I have got some sort of staining here where the wood is a little bit not so nice, particularly along there. But I think I've got enough of a flat here with reasonable wood. So if I get you my pattern, I can position this to get the best bits. So if I make it that shoe, going around that way probably, 
I can avoid the softer bits and I think that should be okay. So I'll cut this block off about there and then I'll be able to start shaping this. And I've got enough obviously on the side for my shoe, heel, etc. So I'm going to try and leave a bit of generous space here. So I'd like to increase my toe uplift if I can, because I don't think my last is the ideal shape for this project. But yeah, so that's the sort of plan. So I'll cut that, but that is one rough then blocked. Just done. So I'm going to cut my other sole base out of this one. There's a little bit of twist here, but I think I can flatten that off. And again, I have got this brown staining, but I'll try and keep sort of in the margins each side a bit. I've got a big knot there, so I definitely want to avoid that, because that'll be right in the way of this heel or the sole. And the knot is going out in that direction. So I'll, I'll aim to use that one. I'll do a split down there, and then probably another split there, and try and re-level it off. I think that's the vague idea. So again, I'm just as I do this, getting my shoe pattern and just making sure I'm getting it in where I'll get the thickness that I want to have. So that's actually quite a nice clean break off there. Not got great amount, so I'm going to take a bit off of here as well. So with a bit of trimming up I can use that plane, I will take it down like that and I'll, I'll be fine across there, I'll cut it across here. So that will be my second block. I'll do a little bit of cleaning up with this on the axe just to try and get it a bit flatter and then I can get on with the actual chopping. So I've got these roughly faced off now and what I'm going to do is mark out the sole position on the block. So this surface is pretty flat and I can draw around here and mark the sole. So there you are, I've done it in a slightly darker colour so I've now got a left foot and a right foot. I didn't want two right feet. Anyway, I can now start, as I say, just blocking this out. So I'll use the knives, get on the knives next of all. So I'm going to be using my power knife, P-A-R-O-I-R, P-A-R-O-I-R, that's spelled. And um, it's on my spoon mule. So I mean, again, ideally, I would have a proper um, clog heavy duty blocking knife, stock knife for clog, clogs um, and I have it on a really solid bench but I've got it on a spoon mule without the head obviously and that works quite well. If you want plans for making your own spoon mule they are in fact on my website and all the money goes to charity to the MDS Association Patient Support Charity. Anyway, nice big blade. I've made the handles and these tools now so they've all got wooden handles fairly heavy duty ferrules which I did the other day so ready for use so I got them they were on hand or about 1896 area maybe a bit before they've got a owner's mark of 1896 on them so my knife is hooked down the end here nice big hook on it and there's an eye bolt so that holds it and then I can take the work and run down it peel off it. Obviously the long handle gives quite a nice bit of leverage which is what I'm going to need.
my um, last has a um, still shallow, it's a 15 millimeter uh, toe lift. And actually what I want on these is more something getting towards 30 millimeters because it's more of a rolling foot action. So I'm going to sort of do a compromise between the two. So I'm just taking a bit more off the front of the toes here. You see on this old clock here, you can see it comes up more and it's because you have a, like a rolling action. I've got to be careful not to upset the whole foot geometry because it lasts, once you get one bit out, you have to sort of semi-compensate for it, which I think I can do by hollowing a bit on the other side, but I've got to be obviously careful how I do that. So it's a little bit of sort of hope and a little bit of sort of judgment. I suppose I'll put my saw away, not have it sticking out on my bench. Well, I feel I'm fairly happy with them. I'm going to try tying them, strapping them to my feet and walking with them. And then what I can do, I can perfect little parts, you know, where I feel it's rolling too much, I can flatten it off. Or if there's the toes getting caught, I can take a bit more off the end. But I can generally sort of try and get them to fit by putting them on my feet. I'm going to shortly be hollowing out more in here at the moment. I've just got like a flat hollow. I need to get my curved hollows in there. Just trying to do a bit more work on these toes. Well, the light's going now, and it's getting quite cold, but. Considering these were logged this morning, they are beginning to get there. Um, next up, I'll be using my hollowing knife to start doing some of the hollowing of the inner sole area to make it comfortable for the feet. So that will be up next. That will be in a separate video. So I'll carry on um, and make in the second video the finishing off of these soles. So at least that's the roughing out done and they're in you know, fairly good shape now, really. And I hope you enjoyed that and if you haven't subscribed already please do and you can see what happens as we go on this clock journey. <laughs> anyway thanks so much for watching and see you in the next video. Bye then.